Allah, you're the source of life and you're the source of truth. To obey you, I strive and my aim is pleasing you. Allah, you are the only one, your promise is always true. You don't need anyone, but we're all in need of you. And I sincerely pray to be among the ones you love. And until my final day, I say in all my prayers, Raditu. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. All praise and thanks are due to Allah, and peace and blessings be upon His Messenger. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new episode of our daily show, Discovering Islam. Allah says in the Quran in Al Ma'idah 5105, Oh, you who have believed, upon you is responsibility. For yourselves, those who have gone astray will not harm you when you have been guided. To Allah is your return altogether. Then he will inform you of what you used to do. Many new Muslims struggled to find Islam and it was accepted. And they accept many challenges with pleasure enjoyed the challenge. For more about the struggle of new Muslims to accept Islam, we are pleased to meet our sister Lana from Germany. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you. May you introduce yourself to our viewers tonight? Thank you. I'm Lana from Germany. I'm 24. I live in Kuwait for four years Mashallah. and I have a daughter. She's almost eight months old. Mashallah. Mashallah. You are welcome. Thank you so and much. And thank you for your time. Uh, when was your first encounter with Islam? Actually, I had a friend in school. She was from Turkey and she's Muslim. But um, the only thing I saw from her was like that she was fasting in Ramadan. This was the only like difference between her and me. And anyone else. Yeah. So, so uh, this was the first time I was ever like in contact with the Muslim. I can remember. And um, the next time was actually when I met my husband. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, your husband is a Muslim? Yes, he's a Muslim. Okay, mashallah. So how you felt when you first see this lady fasting Ramadan? What type of feeling you had? Actually, I found it very weird to starve yourself the whole day, not drink anything, not eat anything. And... Um, like, I didn't understand, like, why is she doing this? I was just thinking it's, it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Like, normal people, when they are hungry, they would eat something. When they are thirsty, they would drink something. So it felt just weird to me. And I had no interest in, like, for example, looking further for what she's believing in because I just didn't get the point of doing such a thing like fasting. I understand. Okay. So what happened next that uh, make you think more seriously about Islam? Uh, this was actually when I was already married to my husband mm -hmm. um, and I saw a report on the German TV. I had German TV channels here in Kuwait okay. and there was, um, there was like a gathering in Frankfurt on the Tile Street hmm. and there was a German uh, revert brother and he was making like an event to inform people about Islam and stuff and uh, the German TV channel was actually making it look like he's kind of dangerous. Oh. So um, I was actually just thinking of like figuring out is this true or not because it looked weird to me that um, they are make, made him look so bad and he just looked like, I don't know, like the people around you, like the men, like he was wearing a uh, dishdasha, which was weird for the people in Germany, of uh, course. Even for me, it was weird to see him. But um, I wanted to know, like, what's the truth? Are they saying the truth or they are making it look like really bad, which is not. Uh -huh. So uh, that uh, incident made you research about Islam? Exactly. I okay. started to do research and I didn't tell anyone about it because before I uh, got married, a lot of people were like, yeah, but you're not going to convert, right? You're not going to become like them. You're going to stay who you are and everything. So I was like, no, I want to 
like do the research on my own. I don't want anyone to be able to tell me later, yeah, it was because of him or because of her, because of the family or something, you know. Yes, yes. So I just kept it for myself. Whenever my husband was at work, I was doing research on the computer mm -hmm. and checking, talking to people to get more knowledge and to f like find out uh, what is true and what is not. Yeah. So this, yeah, th that this is a normal question. Yeah. So your husband is not the reason for for you to to think or to research or to to make this choice. Well, he made me think before, of course, like that Islam is something good because he is a good person, mashallah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it was not like the reason to think about changing my own religion or uh -huh. like uh, thinking of maybe accepting Islam as well because we got married when I was a Christian before yeah. and it was fine okay. and it was fine for him as well so we decided before already that our children would be like raised Islamic like uh -huh. this was something he wanted to and I accepted this because uh, he was like stronger in his beliefs and faith than me and um, if he is a good person and he wants his children to be the same, so I have nothing like to say against this. Mm -hmm. So, so you had everything uh, uh, agreed upon uh, before doing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, being married. Yes, of course. Okay, and um, changing your faith will will change nothing in in your, uh, let's say, life stability or anything. There is no nothing for you to seek from your husband to to change your faith. Uh, actually, no, he was fine with me being a Christian uh -huh. and uh, what we talked about later on was that he of course hoped that I would become a Muslim, yeah. but uh, of course he would not want to be the uh, the bad person who pushed me into something, you know, yeah. like I, I think this is something that many of us converts have a problem with, that um, that the family of the of the husband is like the one who's like trying to push or something, you know, or the, f or the husband himself, uh -huh. like she should be a Muslim. So it was all fine. So that's why I had the chance to like freely go into doing a research about if I want to, uh, if I want to know more or not. I see. How, how, how difficult uh, was it to find uh, resources in, let's say, German about Islam? Uh, it was not so difficult because I started my research with this German brother who converted himself, I think like 10 years ago, if I'm not mistaken. And um, he studies uh, about Islam and he's doing Dawah work in Germany. So this was all already like the base was in, Ger was in German. So I continued my research in German. Actually, first time I was, uh, first time I was um, in contact with like English uh, information about Islam was after I converted, when I was doing classes and stuff in Kuwait. I see. Okay, Let, let's, let's go back a little bit and see what image you had about, about Muslims before you even meet that sister in the university or before any encounters with, with Islam or Muslims. What image you had about Muslims or Islam? Well, I tried to think about this a uh, while before when someone asked me like what did you think before because I'm also trying to imagine what my friends are thinking at the moment about Islam mm -hmm. like what's their image and I can't exactly remember I just know that there was no like bad negative image that many people have now I, I don't remember that I had such a thing because I had my friend who was just like me I mean we had fun together we do things together not this negative thing that many people try to make it look like uh -huh. and um, but I was thinking that Islam was used to like you know like the only thing that you know about Islam is like the women clothing the women rights mm -hmm. uh, the men rights over the women it's all about the bad things for the women uh -huh. this was also one of the reasons why I wasn't interested okay. because uh, I had believed before myself but I didn't want to have the negative uh, addition and having no rights anymore, which people think yeah. that how is the situation with the women in Islam? I see. Uh, so let's say you had sort of negative information about Islam yeah. in the beginning. Yes. To start with. Yes. I see. Okay. So now after your research, um, when it was the time for you to decide, this is it, I will, I will be Muslim. Well, I don't remember like how it like what was the exact thing I read, but I just felt like full of information. Like there was so much, and I think it will never finish. I mean, we are all learning until until we die. Mm -hmm. uh, like it never finishes the knowledge. So uh, I just felt 
like convinced. I just had the feeling that okay, I know enough, and I read before that you should not wait till you learn the prayer or till you are, you know, like have this much on information to make your decision. So mm -hmm. I just uh, told my husband, hey, I want to say my shahada and I want to become a Muslim, and he was shocked <laughs> because he didn't know. I didn't <laughs> okay. tell him about it before. Subhanallah, very interesting, dear viewers. Uh, uh, our sister Lana was doing, uh, hiding her research for Islam from her Muslim husband and when she finally decided to change to be a Muslim, her husband was shocked. This is very, inform uh, this is very interesting for uh, how secret her research was and even someone close to her couldn't find uh, about it. Uh, we will continue learning about her journey to Islam after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Dear viewers, welcome back. We are enjoying this conversation with our sister Lana from Germany and her journey to Islam. So uh, Lana, you were telling me that you were secretly looking for information, studying Islam, and your husband was shocked to know that you were attracted to Islam. Well, he was not shocked that I was attracted to Islam. He was shocked that I made my decision already without him knowing, like that I was hiding everything. So uh, he was shocked, but happy, of course. Good. So the first thing he did was uh, calling his mom and telling her about it. And uh, the next day I went to a Thai center to officially say my shahada to make it official. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay. Uh, have you had a, a specific value or behavior, Islamic value or behavior that attracted you to Islam? Well, I have to say that especially my uh, mother-in-law is a person that is really like righteous and I like her values and her behavior. And this is something like what she was always telling me about, like when I asked her for something or uh, needed her help, she was always telling me like, like how things are done according to Islamic rules and uh, like that the like, how to do something or how to say something based on an like Islamic, uh, Islamic, what's it called? Concepts. Like uh, Islamic concepts. Mm -hmm. So this was something um, I liked from the beginning, even before I was Muslim. I mean, I already said that I didn't have any problem with that our children should be raised Islamic, mm -hmm. like from my husband. So um, what I like the most are actually the manners, that everything is like polite that you don't offend others, that you don't make fun of others, that it's something uh, peaceful, something where, like my mom, f when I was young, I always tried to be friends with everyone. I never wanted to have a fight with someone or be in a bad situation. And she always said, like, the world is not only full of peace, like they are bad people, yeah. don't let them hurt you and so on. And, um, and so she gave me strength, but still she told me to, you know, uh, stay confident and still be friendly to everyone. And this is something that continued in Islam. Like I got more strengthened with this, to still be friendly with everyone, no matter how someone is like dealing with you, even if they are rude to you, still be friendly. It's like the, uh, I think the best thing about Islam. Like, and also it's the best thing to show other people that Islam is nothing bad, because if you're always friendly, if you're always good and mm -hmm. your speech is good, there's no reason to like dislike something. Yeah, exactly. Mashallah. So you're saying that appealed to you to find the same moral foundation between what you, your, your family values, let's say, and Islam. Yes. Uh, it, you didn't feel any strange? Uh, actually, no. This was one of the things I didn't tell my parents uh, immediately after, the, after I converted because I wanted them to see that everything just stays the same. So I waited four more months. I know I'm hiding a lot, yeah. but I waited four more months until I told them. So uh, I could tell them, see, there's nothing bad about that I became a Muslim. I'm still the same. Even our relationship uh, changed to the better since I converted. What, what was their reactions? 
Well, they were shocked and not shocked, they were surprised. surprised. They were surprised that like, they were asking me, okay, what, what happened now that you changed your mind? And, but my parents are not religious. So um, I think it's maybe easier than for others uh, who have parents or family with a strong religious belief that is different. Mm -hmm. Because um, especially friends who have a religious belief, different one, uh, were like trying to, you know, get me back okay. to Christianity. Uh -huh. Like, uh, don't lose your roots and, you know, stuff like that. So uh, my parents, they were accepting that I like take a decision with my mind, like that I think about what I do and what I uh, want to do and what I think is important in my life. I see. Uh, what was your feelings right after taking your Shahada? Uh, I was filled with love and joy and I just felt happy and good and I'm proud of myself that I made this journey and that I was not, that I was not like um, stopped by something. Like, because in the past, I mean, I met my friend at school and I met my husband mm -hmm. and I, I'm sure I met other Muslim people I can't remember. And um, I'm sure I was thinking before as well, I thought about God um, and but it never made me go the whole step to like discovering Islam or to even accept Islam. So I was just feeling happy that I made the decision that I was not shy and uh, thinking more, waiting for um, what is the right thing to do or not, that I like finally took the decision to make this step. I see. Now, if, if you look back to that decision, how do you see your, your gains and losses? based on this decision? Yeah, um, I was thinking about um, that I gained a lot. I mean, there are so much positive things in my life that um, came through Islam. I mean, first of all, uh, that I have a connection with, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, second, I met a lot of sisters in Kuwait and even in Germany through yeah. like Islamic uh, websites and such stuff um, so we help each other this is something like a big gain here and um, of course it's like a guidance for my life like I would never feel like lost again I think inshallah, inshallah. Um, so it's like a lot of gains uh, for the losses I actually can't remember that I felt anything that is different um, I mean, there are some activities you can't do due to, you know, wearing a uh, hijab. Mm -hmm. But this is not something I feel as a loss. Uh, something I was thinking that Muslim women are losing in their life before I was a Muslim. Yeah. But afterwards, when you know why you do this and what, like, who you do it for, mm -hmm. uh, the gain and the loss is like the gain is much more than the loss for it. Mashallah. How how do you compare your life before and after Islam? Well. My life didn't change so much after I converted. I mean, I already lived in Kuwait. It was not like moving to Kuwait and also changing my religion or something. So since I was already living here, uh, what changed is I could uh, talk more with my husband about Islam because uh, before he was not trying to, you know, like annoy me because this is something like uh, what my parents said. You can change your religion, but don't talk to us the whole day and try to convert us or something. Like non-Muslims is something what I was, how I was myself before. Like I don't want someone to talk to me the whole time about why don't you think about God or Allah? Why don't you uh, think about your life and so on? So um, this was something after I converted, I could, or I wanted to ask him questions. And this is something like, like valuable that came to my life. Oh, mashallah. Uh, what makes Islam special compared to other religions? Well, first of all, I think it's the truth. So it's the most special religion, like the only true one. And um, second thing, I think it's like a whole, how to say, like it's a concept, you know? Uh -huh. uh, it's like organized and planned from A to Z, like complete thing. There's nothing missing. There's nothing, um, nothing wrong or uh, uh, like things that don't make sense. 
So as it's something complete and clear, I think it's the most perfect religion compared to others, as they were like for me in Christianity before was like, you know, some unanswered questions, situations where the uh, where the people from the church told me, yeah, okay, you should have doubts, so you have the chance to believe and you know have faith, like uh, by just trying to believe without having a proof or something. So it just never made sense to me. So in Islam, it's different. There is so much proof. If you just want to have a look in the Quran, you will find proof there. Do you see this as an advantage for Islam? Yes. I think everyone who wants to really have a look and really goes into doing research and they have a real chance, inshallah, to find answers and to find the truth in there. Inshallah. And uh, uh, what, what was your previous religion anyway? I was, uh, I was, uh, what's it called? Sorry. You were? Uh, I was Christian, but there's two kinds. I was not Catholic, I was the other one. What's it called in English? Protestant. Protestant, yes. Okay. So, but uh, you, you had enough information about how, how big was your information about that previous religion? Well, um, actually, it was not so big because the only like knowledge I had was from school and in school it's kind of like you learn a bit of this, a bit of that because it's not a certain like uh, a certain uh, power that is trying to put their religion on you. So it's like basically getting a, like random knowledge, a bit of this, a bit of that. So um, my, my knowledge was, I would say, if I compare now my knowledge about Islam and my knowledge about Christianity from what I had before converted, maybe, I don't know, like 20% Christianity and 80% Islam of what I know now. I, I see. So, so you, you mean you didn't have that much information about Christianity as much as you have now? No, I mean that before I converted, my, my knowledge about Christianity was not so much. I actually gained more knowledge when I started to learn about Islam. I understand. It, it taught me more about Christianity as well. So it made it more clear for me to difference, you know. I was, of course, also checking for videos and information about uh, why is Islam the truth and not Christianity? What's the difference between both? Okay. Why leave your religion? Uh -huh. I mean, I could also, like, you know, when I start to think about religion more, I could also uh, try to strengthen my faith uh, as being a Protestant. Uh -huh. But um, I started to think about Islam while I had uh, seen this TV show. So I wanted to know about Islam and then Everywhere I was reading Christianity, Christianity, Christianity. So I knew that about the Bible, that it's also the holy book, that mm -hmm. and so on. So, I mean, it all goes together, you know. Exactly. Uh -huh. This is very interesting. Dear viewers, we will continue this very interesting conversation with our sister Lana from Germany and her research about the true religion after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Dear viewers, welcome back. We are enjoying this conversation with our sister Lana from Germany and her journey to Islam. So sister Lana, you were, you were telling me about your research about religions, that you became more interested in researching about religions after knowing about Islam. So, so that, that research gave you so much information about both Islam and Christianity. Uh, and that you were telling me that you were seeing more about Christianity uh, than Islam. Uh, no, I seen more about Christianity than how I knew about it before. Okay. So uh, I gained actually more knowledge after I wanted to leave Christianity than how I, how, like as much as I had before. I see. So um, it was clear for me at some point uh, that I want to enter Islam, I want to become a Muslim, um, when it was not just, like, I was not just convinced that Islam is the truth, I was also convinced that Christianity is not the right thing. 
I see. Okay, so so that was the time when you learned uh, the most about Christianity. Yes. Okay, because this is a very natural question that maybe someone will say, okay, she didn't know anything about her religion and then she just changed it. Yes. Yeah, but uh, what happened? You, you learned your religion. When you decided to leave it, you were learning everything about it. Exactly. Well, I would not say everything because I think it's difficult to, you know, learn everything. everything. But uh, a lot. Enough, actually. I actually found answers on questions that I had before. And I asked before, I never got an answer on them. I got the answer in Islam. Like, there were questions before, like, you know, about the Trinity. Uh, what about Jesus and, uh, and God and the Holy Ghost and then the Church? You know, in the like the Shahada for the for the Protestants, you know, where you like praising the church. Mm -hmm. uh, I I never liked this part, you know, because it's like, I mean, who's the church? Is it the church that is in, in your city, or is it the whole church in whole Germany, or in the whole world, or yeah. does it mean the building or the people inside? And I mean, when I went to uh, when I went to church in my city where I'm from. They were people I I didn't like. So are they part of this when I say like this shahada, or um, uh, is it the building or is the Holy Ghost somewhere in there? Like this is the thing I was asking myself some questions, and I was asking questions to the people, and they could not answer. It was always about if there was a question, they had no like you know no ayah, no proof or something from 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 a holy book. They just said yeah okay you just have to believe. Okay. Yeah, so this didn't happen to me in Islam. I didn't have to disbelieve. You know, there is like, if you have a question, there is an answer. And, I mean, there are a few things you have to believe because you can't just say, yeah, if I want to know this is true, uh, then you don't ask just for you know, a miracle to happen. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. I can't say, yeah, I only believe in Islam if it starts to rain right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is proof of things that we can't know but they are written in the Quran. So we know that this is the truth. Uh -huh. 